let's keep it moving with another category. Nick Chubb's in as well. Total touches for running backs last season. Christian McCaffrey, run CMC, 403 touches. That is just ridiculous. Uh, the other guys on that list, all over 300. Zeke at 355, we spoke about him earlier. Leonard Fournette, 341, the workhorse, man. Underrated. Nick Chubb, 334. Derrick Henry, 321. Chris Carson, Joe Mixon, Le'Veon Bell, and Dalvin Cook round out the 300 club. So between CMC, Zeke, Fournette, Chubb, Henry, Carson, Mixon, Bell, and Cook. Whether your selling point is age, history, O-line, or the situation, which of those nine backs would you label the biggest red flag? Uh, this was a tough one. Um, it's a good list. You know, I don't, it's hard for me to just throw out that red flag label, you know. I've tried to think of like injuries. So then I kind of looked at Dalvin Cook, but I just think he's so talented that, and he's in a good system that I think he'll be okay. Um, and then I kind of went back to um, uh, Le'Veon Bell. I just think, you know, he made his money. He's unhappy with his coach. He's in a kind of a crap situation. They have a bad old line. He averaged like 3.2 yards a carry last year. Yep. I mean, you would think there's there'd be, you know, call for, for a little uh, bounce back this year, but I just don't see it. Like, I just think he's kind of like, he's kind of like, oh, I'm stuck on a bad team. Like, I just don't see his attitude changing where he's like, like where he, I just don't see him as that guy who wants to prove people wrong and he's going to have like a chip on his shoulder. So I just, I just, I'd, I'd see continued struggles for him. So if I'm, I'm in fantasy, I'm, I think he'd be my biggest red flag if I'm drafting that for like those first three or four rounds. Hmm. Hmm. Good old veteran. Drew, who's your guy, man? Biggest red flag. I went back and forth too. Um, I was going to go with Bell. Um, the only thing, uh, I mean, Paul pretty much covered all my points. The other thing I want to mention is um, stretching the field. You know, you know, Sam Darnold did a pretty good job on games that he could start besides the whole mono thing. I think the Jets kind of fell apart with that. Um, but again, you know, he's going to have to build chemistry with new receivers. They lost the, the field stretcher, Robbie Anderson. He's over with Matt Rule now in Carolina. And I mean, what is, what are the great highlight points? What are the great positive talking points on that offense uh, for the New York Jets? Everyone hates on Gase too. Like, is he is he really in the position he he needs to be? It doesn't really look like he's pushing the offense. Um, we can all say that you know Peyton Manning helped him get that job. You know with this test that um, that was on his resume um, to get that Jets job. But um, I went with I'm gonna stay on this um, I'm gonna stay on this boat. I'm gonna go with Chubb. Yeah, he's a great talent. He really really is a great talent. I'm not knocking it at all. But, yeah, he only did it one year, but at the same time, brand new offense, brand new team, um, not enough time to, you know, share with, uh, with the offense with these limited practices. They don't even know when they're going to be back in, the, um, in full time, either with pads or without, either full, full film rooms or not, who's going to be in the squad, are you going to be able to, you know, be next to the person that is going to uh, run your ear through that playbook. Um, I think that timeshare is really going to push through. And – if you were to ask me, like yourself, if you were a Benny man, I don't think Baker has what it takes to push them over the edge. Um, not to mention, I mean, you're talking about Baltimore boosting their defense. Pittsburgh, their insane defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's – they're going to have to face both of those teams twice a year. And um, I don't know, man. I think that's, that's, one, that's one focus on, on the top of everyone's list. Stop Chubb and make Baker uh, beat you. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little surprised on your Chubb takes today. <laughs> I really am. Um, this one actually stuck out like a sore thumb to me. I went really into this one. I'm not going to lie. Um, <sighs> Dalvin Cook, man. Contract year. 2019 was actually his first year to get 1,000 total yards. Not just on the ground, total yards. I'm including receiving all those, all three years. Last year, awesome. I hear you, Paul. He had 11.35 on the ground, 5.19 in the air. In three years, though, we know he, he missed a dozen as a rookie. ACL, 
Miss a dozen games. I get it. It happens to the best of them. Well, he's also missed two two games in a year. Last year, sprained shoulder. Year before that, hamstring kept him out five games. Back in college, tore his labrum. You know, we all know the injury history, but we all know the limits at running back when it comes to the duration of a career. He just looks awesome player. I take him on my team. Fantasy, a little bit lower than these guys, but I take him on my team. Reality, I take him there as well. Not trying to totally down a guy, but I think there's a reason they gave Alexander Madison 100 touches. He capitalized 462 yards there. This might be the coaching staff's last season. Mike Zimmer, he's on the hot seat. I know they're winning. They won a playoff game this year. They reached it the year before. Went to an NFC title game. I get the recent success. But we've seen owners pull the trigger um, on some good, good teams, but they didn't think they had the coaches to get them over the hump. Not everyone gets that chance to be Andy Reid to finally get over the hump, you know. So not everyone gets a Super Bowl. I get it. I like Gary Kubiak, the OC. He's been around a long time. I glanced at his coaching history to look into the backfield. As a head coach of the Texans, he had Dominic Williams, two seasons over 1,000 yards. Steve Slayton had one. Ben Tate had one. Ron Dane, in a timeshare, reached 700 yards. No one wanted Ron Dane on their team, but he made it happen. I'm just <laughs> – just saying, and before that, as Denver's OC, he had, of course, Terrell Davis. We know he's a Hall of Famer, 40 years, over 1,000 yards. One of them was actually 2,000 yards, so that's why I'm bringing it up. I, I didn't really remember that. It was Gary Kubiak, so that's why I kind of like, damn. He helped TD get to 2K. A lot. I mean, CJ 2K and TD, is that really – I don't know anyone else off the top of my head. You know, I think LTs was all purpose. I don't know. Um, and then he had Clinton Portis uh, in Denver as well, rushed for 1,000 yards twice. He converted fullback Mike Anderson. He also did it twice. Olandis Gary, Ruben Drones, they both did it once. I'm just not sold that <laughs> – look, I don't think they want to pay him. I just don't. He may think he's worth more than his rookie contract based off one awesome season. I get it. I don't fault Dalvin Cook. I am kind of ripping him one, though, because you showed me once, man. I get it. You're talented, but you showed me once. <sighs> There's no way I'd pay him. Last month, he wanted to be the highest paid running back. Uh, get, I, Paul, I get it. The talent, undeniable. Drew, you know that as well. Um, if he even thinks about sitting out, I think Lev Bell had a stronger case. He sat. Zeke, way stronger case. Went to Cabo. Melvin Gordon did not have much of a case, in my opinion. And I think that's where Dalvin Cook lies on that end of the spectrum, to be honest. One baller season out of three, that's not a payday in security to me, seriously. Um, and then I kind of looked, okay, if the coaching staff stays, uh, they kind of already been with Hunt. Or Hunt, going back to your point. No, nah, <laughs> they, they've been with Cook. They've seen him. They've yet to extend him. And if he gets a new coaching staff, that wasn't the guy they drafted. Just wasn't. And then I looked. I'm like, all right, well, if he sits, who can they pick up? So I checked out the free agent list. It's not like, ooh, let's sign him. But Devontae Freeman, Lamar Miller, a couple guys that have had some success before. Peyton Barber, he was involved last year. You know, we're not really looking at a star back, more of a timeshare because – Madison will probably get the opportunity first, 4.6 yards per carry. That's not bad. So, But then I look deeper down the list. The guy everyone wants to forget, C.J. Anderson. And then, then I look, I'm like, Spencer Ware, didn't he have a good year somewhere? I knew it was KC, but I don't remember how many yards it was. It was actually 900. So, I mean, there's capable free agents at a position that most people agree is the most replaceable. Again, I like Cook, ultra talented. I just don't think he has much of a case. He's he scares me with the injuries. I think he's easily the guy on this list where I have a red flag. Um, if you're drafting Dalvin Cook, you're probably drafting Madison higher than you want. And if you're gonna draft a guy that high, I I don't want to have to waste. I don't know a draft pick that's three rounds higher just to get a handcuff. 
than than plotting out a better plan for fantasy. I mean, am I too harsh on Dalvin Cook here? Absolutely not, man. That's a, that's a burning roster spot if you're drafting in fantasy. But you're right. Hey, if you do it once, you know, the smart GMs and the smart owners in this league, they're going to pay you for what you're going to do, not for what you've done. You know, that's a smart thing. Me being a Rams fan, I know exactly how detrimental that could be to your team. So um, the best I see in his, in his scenario is, is a one K is a, is a one year tender franchise tag tender. And that, you know, you're going to have to take that because it's going to be good money. But unless you give me another year or two, I don't see an extension. I mean, look at how many coaches and, and teams have gone through just the draft or, like you said, through the free agent wire, middle of the season, playoffs, and you've had enough to produce. It's, it's a different league now. It's sad to say because I do love the run game, um, and these guys take the most beating on the field. But it's a different league, man. You can find running backs everywhere. Too harsh, Paul? No, I mean, he was second. He would have been second on my list. That's why I kind of mentioned him, you know, the injury. Yeah. Anytime you have injury history as a running back, it's going to be your your detriment. You know, it's going to. So I, I totally agree with you. I, I I struggle to see the Vikings shelling out big money to to keep him around. You know, I mean, you know, he could have a healthy year this year. Who knows? But you know, but you know, the injury history is pretty is pretty extensive. So you got to definitely take that in consideration. And then, like Drew said, in today's market where running backs are struggling to get paid, you know, it's that that's only going to hurt him even more. So, so yeah, I mean, as far as drafting goes, I think you just got to weigh the risk or reward. If you're, if you're sitting there with running backs that are still, you know, kind of that workhorse type of potential running back, you probably take them instead. But if you're sitting at a spot where, Hey, like the alternatives are guys who you're not sure maybe are going to be in a timeshare or anything like that. So you just kind of, if you're drafting, you got to weigh that risk or reward because if he does stay healthy, even for, 14 games you know he's gonna put up big numbers you know so so yeah it's tough yeah it is tough 